Hey everyone, welcome to another video. In this video, we'll be tackling the admin page as part of the Odin project. I have it pulled up right here. Typically, what I like to do with these is start them, record them as I'm doing them, and then I'll still cut out parts and stuff if it's boring or if it just doesn't fit. But typically, yeah, it's the first time that I've attacked that I've tackled that project. Uh, sometimes there's projects that like I've done before in JavaScript or in other settings. But yeah, this one was a little bit tricky. I've record I've completed and recorded this project twice, and both times it just it just wasn't very good content so in order to be honest i just want to be upfront that yeah i've already tackled this project quite a few times in the past couple of weeks instead of yeah you guys seeing how i would do it my first try like we can't do that anymore so i'm just going to show you what i built and then i'm going to walk through how i built it we'll still code everything out and you'll see every single line of code that i write yeah we should be able to go through things a lot quicker and i should be able to do a lot better job of explaining what i'm doing this is what the project looks like after we're done so it looks a little bit different than the rubric over here, but there's a lot of things that are the same. One thing I did change is this sidebar over here. Um, when you hover over it, then it'll expand out and have the names of the icons and stuff. And then once you hover up, or once you move your mouse off of it, then it'll shrink. And this is responsive. So if we shrink, like you'll notice that these cards, yeah, grow or shrink accordingly, as well as like this, uh, text and stuff over here if we have a larger screen everything will grow and it's really responsive to the page we used a lot of grid css grid as well as flexbox so without any further ado let's get into the project and i'll show you guys what we do here first we're going to go into our odin directory next let's go mkdir and let's call this admin page go into that and then let's go touch index.html and let's open that up in code okay first thing we're going to do I like to do this on all of my projects is do a prettier file I'm just going to be an empty set of brackets um, if you guys want to see how I configure that, you could refer to this video up here. Um, it just allows us to format and make our code look a lot better. Next thing we're going to do is our style sheets. Let's do styles.css. And let's do a reset.css as well. Cool, we got all of those. We're not going to do any JavaScript. That's my goal for this is no JavaScript. We will need a folder with our icons. So let's just name it icons and that should be good. Okay, let's go to index and let's fill this all out. We're gonna call this admin page and let's grab those two style sheets. So the first one we're gonna grab is reset.css and the next one is going to be styles.css. Cool. Okay, there's essentially really three parts to the page. So if we look at what we have here, we have this drawer over here, the nav bar up top, and then just the main content. So let's just, let's just style those out. So let's make a div. And we're gonna put a comment here. This is gonna be the app drawer. Cool little trick to comment, out, or to make a comment like this is if you hold control, Press K and then C, it'll comment out whatever line you're on. The next section that we're going to do is the nav bar. That's going to be a div as well. And let's get rid of this line. And then the last section is just the main content. So and that as well is a div. First off, let's uh, yeah, let's fill out this reset.css. Okay, we're just gonna copy and paste this one right here. What this does is yeah, it just strips away most of this default formatting that the HTML has on our page. Gets rid of that so we can just do our styling how we want. Okay, um, we're not gonna deal with styles until 
we've done most of the scaffolding for the page. Okay, so now that we got those three main divs, let's, uh, yeah, let's grab this and let's set a class to drawer. Okay, and then within the drawer, let's just open this up in a live server. Okay, mine's on port 5501, since I still have this one open. And there's nothing on this page, which is to be expected. Okay, inside of this drawer, we're, we're just going to essentially have all of those icons as well as like a title. So let's name this first one. Let's call it dashboard. And let's also give it a class of menu item. Okay, in each of these, we're going to have an image. We don't have the source for those images yet, but this one's just going to have an H1 and it's going to say dashboard. And then we're just, a, we're essentially just going to have the same thing except with dashboard for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine more. I'm going to copy this. Let's delete the dashboard class from here. Let's save that. Let's just do this eight more times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is going to be home. So let's just look right at here. Home and then profile, messages, history, tasks, communities, settings, support, and privacy. Okay, we also, I'm just going to put a comment right here. We need extra spacing. So we'll probably want to do like the nth child selector. I don't know if you guys remember that from, it was in one of the lessons that we learned. So next thing, let's just grab all of these images real quick. So uh, I believe the Autumn Project said we can get them from right here. So yeah, it's nice about this is we can, uh, let's make this full screen. We should be able to search for them. So the first one we want is it's going to be called view dashboard and let's grab this one and yeah how we're going to save these is there's a few different ways we can do it but if we click on this view svg we can download it cool the next one is just home and this one okay let's grab card account details that's just going to be like for a profile okay the next one is message let's grab this one this one's fine Okay, that's all of the icons. Let's move this back over here. Hopefully you guys can see this. Let's make it a little bit bigger and let's move this guy over. So let's start grabbing all of those. We actually first need to move them from our downloads folder. So all of these guys, let's move them. Oops. to icons cool we'll probably need to come back and get a few more for some other stuff but okay the path we go forward slash icons this one's dashboard which is view dashboard okay home is icons home i'm actually just going to copy this icons and this one is um, card account details. This one's going to be message. Android messages. History is clock outline. Tasks is note multiple. Communities is um, account group. 
Settings is cog. Support is a message question. And the last one, privacy is shield check. So if we say we see all of those pop up right here. Perfect. Okay, that's all that we need for the dashboard for now. Um, we'll, we'll come back to our CSS and make the uh, classes and stuff with some styling. But it's nice in VS Code is um, we can press right here and we can minimize all like the, the drawer so we can start working on the nav bar. Okay, in the nav bar, we're going to want a top section and a bottom section. If we look at like our rubric, um, you could see that there's like a row up here, a uh, row up here at the top and then another row at the bottom. And this one's like 40% of the height and this one's like 60% of the height. So in our top section, let's give our navbar class and let's just name it navbar. And then in the top section, let's make a div with a class of top nav. And in here, we're going to want a div with a class of search. And this div is going to be the search icon and search bar. So inside of this, let's make another div with a class of menu item. And we'll do an image. We don't have the source yet, so let's go grab that. And that's just gonna be magnify. Let's grab this first one. Okay, we get it right here. We could actually just drag it from here. If you hold Control B, it'll open up your Explorer. So we're just gonna drag it from here into icons. So the source for this is icons, uh, magnify. Cool, and then below that, let's do a div. Now let's just do an input. Uh, the type is gonna be text. Let's go name equal to search. We don't need an ID, but I don't really like autocomplete. So let's just turn autocomplete to off. Cool, and we'll do some more styling on this search bar later. But for now, I think our search is complete, so. What else do we have in our top nav? We also have a bell icon, an avatar, and our name. Let's do a div with a class of account. It's gonna have all of our account details. Let's do another menu icon. In here, we're gonna have to grab the bell ringing. So let's go back to material icons. Okay, right there. So let's go image, sources, icons, bell, ring, outline. Okay, below this menu icon, let's do a div with a class of GH for GitHub avatar. What's really cool about GitHub is like, uh, we're, we're gonna do it a little bit differently, but let's just say we have an image in here. You could do, you could do HTTP, TPS colon forward slash github dot com forward slash let's just grab our github so let's just grab this whole URL actually if you do this and then do dot png it'll actually uh, grab your png that you have right here so it's a really nice easy way to like get an avatar or something which is what we're going to do later but we're actually going to do this with CSS so Let's delete this for now, but let's do a, a comment. So this is going to be avatar from GitHub. And there's not going to be anything in it. We're just going to assign that image with CSS. And then let's do another comment. This is going to be our user's username. And we're just going to put that side of a P tag. So 
Let's give this a class of name. Cool. So I think that's all that we need for the top section. Let's work on the bottom section now. So let's make a div with a class of bottom. Let's make a class called profile. This is going to be like we have another avatar. It's the same avatar that we have over here as well as like our username and stuff as well. So let's go profile details. Okay, inside of here, let's go, uh, let's do another GitHub uh, avatar div. We don't need to put anything inside of that. So right below that, let's do a class with profile name. And we're gonna want two things in here. First is a paragraph with the class of greeting. Hi there. And below that, let's do another paragraph with the class of name. Oops. This should be a paragraph. Class of name. And we're gonna do a span inside of here with the class of username. And this will be at Rob's. Okay, so that's all within this div right here, profile. Obviously, if we look at this, it's, it's not gonna look anything impressive yet. The, the next thing that we have in this bottom section is just these buttons over here. So below the, below the profile div, so one more down. Let's make a div with a class of buttons. So it's just gonna be a button with a class of BTN. This one's gonna say new. We're just gonna copy and paste this three times though. Next one is upload. And the last one is share. I'm not gonna add any features or functionality to these buttons. They're just gonna, uh, they're just gonna be there for show pretty much. But obviously if you wanted to add JavaScript or have them be anchor tags, you could do something like that as well on your own. But that's all of the HTML that we're gonna do for the nav bar. Let's just move on to the main content. Uh, so instead of a div, let's actually just make this a main tag. And we could have named this nav as well, but it doesn't matter really. Let's go class is equal to content. Okay, if we look at this, essentially we have like your projects, which is just like a H2 or H1 tag. Then we have a grid with all of these cards as well as a couple of cards over here. So let's go, let's make a div called projects. Each of these cards is a project. The first thing we're gonna do is an H3 and we're just gonna say your projects. We're not gonna, I don't think we're going to add any CSS to this, but we might. Um, now let's do a div with a class of cards. And there's just going to be a whole bunch of different cards. So let's just do a div with a class of card. And uh, in each card, we're going to have a title in a H5. And let's name it a class of card dot title. So Okay, we just need six cards here. Luckily, once we get one of them, we can just copy and paste for all of the other ones. So we got a card, card title. Uh, this one is gonna be super cool project. And inside of that, we have some card text and that's gonna be in a paragraph. So card text, and we can actually do is just type in lorem and yeah, it'll fill it out with a whole bunch of lorem ipsum. 
uh, it might be a little bit too much lower momentum, so let's just uh, let's just take out most of that. And below this paragraph, we can see we have a few more icons. So let's do a div with a class of actions. Actually, we're going to give this a class of icons, and let's do three images. So we're just going to copy and paste this. And we're going to just have to grab these. So let's go back here. I think these might be the last ones we need to grab. I think so. So the first one is going to be called star plus outline. Let's grab that one. Next one is I plus outline. And the last one is source branch. Now this one doesn't actually match up exactly with what they have right here, but it's close enough, I think. Close out of all of these and let's minimize that. So the first one was a star, oh no, icons star plus outline next one is icons uh i plus outline and the next one is icons and source branch okay so that's one individual card we need to have six of them so let's grab that I'm just gonna grab the comment as well so we can see them being spaced out so that's one i think that's four one two three four five six okay we could see the second one is less cool project next one is impossible app we're just going to leave the lower mips in the same but um, it's not that hard to change it. You just have to, like, you could just select this and if you do lorem, it will actually, uh, generate. This is different lorem. So yeah, if you want different lorem ipsum, you could just generate more if you want to. Okay. After impossible app, we have easy peasy app. Got ad blocker. And moneymaker. After we have all of those, let's just work on this last section over here for announcements and trending. So that's still going to be um, in the main content, but it's not going to be in cards. So let's just minimize cards. We don't have to worry about that. This is going to be side content. Um, we got announcements and trending. Okay, for announcements, let's make a div with the class of announcements. Okay, inside of here, let's do another, let's do a UL with the class of card. And there's gonna be an LI with a class of single announcement, so just announcement. And there'll be an H5 with a class of card title. This one's gonna say site maintenance. And a paragraph with a class of card text. And this is also lorem. Okay, we have three three announcements. So we're just gonna copy this three times. Okay, the second one is community share day. I spelled that right and the last one 
is updated privacy policy. Okay, that's pretty much all we need for announcements. So let's just move to the last section, which is trending. That's going to go right here. So div with class of trending. Let's do an H3, say trending. Um, and then this is going to be similar. Let's do a UL with the card or with the class of card and li with a class of trend we're also going to give this trend one and actually yeah then let's do a, cla a div with a class of github avatar two let's see why i do this in just a minute um we're going to do a class of account And then inside of account, we're gonna have a paragraph with a class of username. Uh, this first one is at Tegan. And then let's do a paragraph with a class of name. We're also gonna give this a different class of card text. And this is going to be world peace builder. So let's copy this. We just need four of them. So one, two, three. So there's a total of four. So let's give this a class of trend. We're gonna do hyphen two. And we're actually gonna do hyphen one up here. Like that. And then let's move this to GitHub Avatar 3. This person's name is Morgan. We could actually just do Rob's. You could just do your own right here. Okay, the last one, hyphen, not last one, second to last one. This is a little bit confusing because it is trend one, but it's avatar two because we've already used our own. So we could actually, instead of doing avatar three, we could just do that. Okay, GitHub avatar three. This person is Kendall, life-changing app. And this last one is hyphen four, GitHub avatar four. And let's go at Alex. No traffic maker. Okay, I think that's pretty much all of the HTML. Um, if we look at it, it's just a mess. There's no, <laughs> there's no CSS at all. There's just yeah, for just plain HTML. So let's go over to our styles and we'll start grabbing all of our classes. So a couple things we're going to want to do is use as many root variables as possible, as well as use as many of those techniques we just learned about. There's a bunch of cool ones like calc and clamp. Um, uh, and we'll be using grid as much as possible. So we'll design the layout of the page with grid. We'll design the layout out of the page with grid and then like the main content, that's all going to be a grid. So let's grab our root and let's uh, assign some uh, global variables. So first one's going to be font size. Let's do 16 pixels and then font family. Let's do Ubuntu condensed sans serif yeah actually we might need to grab this from google fonts okay so let's copy these and put them in the very top of our index 
Um, let's do it right there. And then in our CSS, we've already defined this right here. Okay, the next thing, let's grab uh, text primary and let's set this to black. Uh, let's do text secondary. Oops. And let's do white. Let's do BG for background primary. We're going to set this to pound two three two three two E, which is like a very dark gray. Let's set a background secondary to pound one four one four one eight, which is also like a very close to black. Let's do transition speed. And then we'll do one second. And let's uh, set the color of the, the app drawer. So if we look here, so the color that I'm using here, you could change this to whatever you want, but I'm going to do drawer color. The reason why we want to set up, the reason why we want to set it up here in our global variables is we want to use the same color for like these buttons. So color that I'm using is uh, 0 E A 5 E 9 and we're gonna set our drawer width uh, so we're gonna use our first clamp right here and we're gonna do 210 pixels 22 viewport width or 325 pixels so how clamp works let's see if it brings up the documentation nope but how clamp works is this is like the the minimum this is the maximum and this is like the ideal so if it can be this it will um, if the screen gets too big it'll do this otherwise the smallest it'll ever get is this but it'll it'll try to get this middle one I think pretty sure that's what it is um, we're going to do a nav background color one, and this is going to be pound F8, F8, F8. We're gonna do nav color one. This is going to be pound C9, C9, C9. I'm gonna do nav color two. This is going to be 62DAFF6E. We need to make sure we put a pound in front of that. And this is going to be, um, I think I'm actually using that for these cards down here. Next one, we're going to set blue one. That's going to be pound zero eight four C six one. That is, I believe, I believe that might be this over here. Let's set our GitHub avatars. So the first one, G H avatar. Um, it's going to be a URL. And this one's our HTTPS github.com forward slash. I never remember what this is. And then you just do dot PNG. Okay, the next GitHub avatar. What's nice about this is you could just, honestly, I don't know if you're not supposed to or not, but like you could grab random people's because if they're public, so like I'll do james.png. I don't know anything about him. Let's make sure this is GitHub avatar two. 
I'm going to copy this. Let's do GitHub Avatar 3. And we'll do Bob. Let's do Alice for four. And let's do one more four five. I don't think we have five, do we? Maybe. This is going to be Amy. Okay, there's a couple more things. We're almost there. The next one, content. We're going to do gray. This is going to be an RGB of 235, 235, 235. All of these need uh, uh, colons after them as well. Semi semicolons. And then we're going to set two transitions. So the first one is transition, not drawer, margin left, zero point four seconds, ease in. Next one is transition for drawer. This is going to be a width, 0 0.4 seconds, ease in. Okay, these these are actually a little bit difficult to figure out, but um, I'll definitely be going over these in just a minute. And yeah, if you notice, like this one's width and this one's margin left. Okay, let's, uh, let's grab the body element and we're gonna set the width to 100. Viewport width, let's set the height to 100 viewport height. This will make it so, yeah, the screen is, or the body is always 100% of our screen. We're gonna obviously do display grid. If you could spell it right. So nothing changes right now, but we're gonna set up some grid template areas. And so the first one, if we look at this page right here, um, um, let's make our screen a little bit bigger. So if we notice, if we, we could think of this as like columns or as rows, let's think of it as rows because that's how grid template area works is you set up, you set up your rows and then you put out how many columns you want in each row. But so if we think of this as rows, we essentially have like this top row right here, which is the nav bar. And then the second row, which is the main content. And this top row is a lot smaller. Like this, this bottom one takes up like four times as much as this top one. And then when we're looking at columns, we essentially have like one, two, three, four, right? So when we do our grid template areas, I'm gonna bring this down another line. So we're going to set up two rows. It's going to look like this. So we're going to set up the drawer, the nav, 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 which we can see like this first row is going to be like this first column is the drawer. The second, third, and fourth columns is the uh, nav bar. Then let's do drawer, content, content, content. So same thing in the second row, which is below the nav bar, we have the drawer takes up the first column and then the uh, content takes up the next three. We could, if we wanted to think of this as like two columns, like this is one column and then the rest of this is another column. That would probably work as well, but this is how I did it. Okay, let's do a grid template rows. We're going to do 0 0.8 fractional units and four fractional units. So that means like this takes up like less than one. So if this was one, it'd be like 20% of the screen and this would be 80%, which is like the, the rows. So that means that yeah, this top nav bar is taking less than 20% and then this section is taking up uh, like 80%. And then let's set up our grid template columns. So we're gonna do five rem, then one FR, one FR, one FR. Okay, once again, I don't think that's gonna, oh, it does change on our screen. So yeah, we could see, um, 
nothing is we haven't set like these sections to have uh grid template areas yet but we can already see that we've we have it split into four columns so let if we start if we start to set these areas like we'll see uh we'll see them take their proper spaces okay so let's grab all those main things let's grab the drawer um it's going to be grid area um drawer you do not put these in quotations let's grab the nav bar grid area nav and let's grab content cool now we see um we see this is taking up five rem then this is taking up um it looks like it's taking up quite a bit more than we want it to so uh, we'll have to see what's going on there but we can see it's taking up about 20 percent of what the rest of it is okay let's set the background color this is going to be far we're going to grab the drawer color let's grab the width the width five rem position let's do fixed uh transition it's going to be var transition drawer and then let's do overflow hidden cool okay uh, we're gonna move these down just a little bit so let's grab the menu item actually um, yeah this should be fine okay menu item the color going to be var and it's going to be text secondary so we saw that yeah the font color just changed uh, let's go display flex so they're all in the same line now flex direction row line items Oops. Do center and let's do justify content flex start okay we didn't see a ton change but that's fine let's do men dot menu item we're going to do greater than and then star so we're selecting everything within the menu item we're going to go cursor pointer so the reason i did this instead of putting it here is um, there will be a little bit of a gap between these two so like I don't necessarily want like if you notice like right here I don't want there to be a pointer um, but if I grab the whole menu item then there would be a pointer even like right here but I want to make it look like you're either clicking on the icon or clicking on the text but um, not necessarily like this empty space right here but if you want to put it in the menu item as well that's fine okay so now we're going to um, do one more thing here. Let's set the height to 100 viewport height. Okay, um, and then let's do drawer on hover. We're going to do set the width to bar. Now we're going to put drawer width. So if you see, like it expands now once we hover over it. And then we're going to set a few more things before we can um, make it so everything shifts away from it. So let's do uh, drawer on hover. We're going to grab the menu item. So we're going to grab all menu items and we're going to grab all of the h1s inside of the menu items we're going to set display inline because otherwise we actually don't want them to show right like we don't want the we don't want this text to show unless we're hovering on it so let's uh let's grab 
all of these so we could set grab just this um let's set display none so now i don't they only show up once we hover over it um let's also set some margin left let's do five percent i'll just space it out from the icons just a little bit okay uh one thing we are going to have to do is let's go into all of these icons and change the the color uh there might be oops. there might be an easier way to do this i'm not 100 percent sure but what i had to do was um if you look at these svgs like it's actually just uh if you set the fill you have to set it on path so if we grab the path we set fill is equal to white then you'll notice like it changed to white so we're gonna have to go through all of these onto the fill onto the path and change the fill to white um but let's grab let's see if we could find path and then d so we can see that right there so if we replace it with path fill equals white and then d that should So that's probably the easiest way is just find and replace. You have to make sure if you're replacing anything like path D, you need to make sure you put those back in. Otherwise you'll mess up all of your SVG files. So it's a good idea just to have a backup of those SVG files like in your downloads or something. So before you do that, yeah, maybe just make a backup. So now all of those are uh, filled with white, which is good. Okay, let's grab a few more things right here so let's go let's grab the drawer let's grab the div that's not the first child which is the dashboard and let's grab everything within that so uh, greater than with the asterisk let's set the padding Oops. okay we're going to do one viewport width 0 0.1 viewport width 0 0.1 viewport width and then zero viewport width so if we set viewport width that means that the padding will change depending on how big our screen is so yeah they just got spaced out a little bit which is a lot better let's do font size we're going to do a calc let's do a base of 20 pixels plus 0.2 viewport width so once again, like if our screen gets bigger, then the font will also get bigger. So we can see that right here. Like this font is bigger now that the screen's wider than if we go to over here. And let's just set a base padding left of 20 pixels as well. So it's roughly centered in the within the app drawer. Let's also grab the drawer div not first child and let's grab all the images within those we're going to set the width to calc we're going to do 20 pixels plus 0 0.5 viewport width and let's set the height to the same thing so that it's always a square so they're a little bit smaller now, but if the screen gets bigger, then they should get bigger as well. And the padding as well. You can see that the padding also gets bigger. So that should be good there. And let's grab the dashboard class, which is just the dashboard. We're gonna set the font size. Let's do another clamp. We'll do 12 pixels, calc, uh, let's do a base of 25 pixels, plus 0 0.9 viewport width, and then max of 50 pixels. So the dashboard's gonna be significantly bigger. Uh, let's also grab a dashboard image, and we're gonna do display, flex, align items, 
center, justify content, flex start, width, it's going to be calc. So base of 40 pixels, plus 0.7 viewport width. It's gonna be the same thing for the height. So I'm just gonna copy this for the height. Let's set padding left to 10 pixels and padding top to 10 pixels as well. Cool. Okay, and then let's grab this settings as well. So that's going to be, let's go up here to menu icon. So dot drawer. And we'll grab the div. That's the nth child. I think it's seven. Um, we're just going to set padding. Um, I need to make sure that I close this parentheses crack padding top to 50 pixels. Uh, so actually needs to be eight, which is the cog. It's actually uh, 60 pixels. Cool. So we did that without setting like a custom class on this uh, this div. We could have set a custom class if we wanted to though. That would be totally fine. Okay, next thing we need to do is when we hover over this, we need to adjust. What we're gonna do essentially is we're gonna adjust the margin left of the nav bar as well as like the main content. So in order to do that, let's go to where we're hovering, which is right here. So let's go drawer on hover. We're gonna grab a sibling, which means you use the, this is the, uh, like the squiggly line. I can't think of the name of that right now. And we're gonna grab the nav bar. We're also going to do the same thing. So drawer, hover. And this is going to be content. We're gonna set the margin left of calc, var, it's going to be drawer width. And then we're gonna subtract five rem. So now you can see once we hover over it, like these guys shift over to where they need to. However, we need to adjust the transition time on those. We have to do those in here. So on the nav bar, if we set the transition, um, we're gonna do bar and then it's going to be transition. You have to make sure you do not drawer. So we look, we can see it get pushed right along with it. So the reason we're doing not drawer is if we do drawer, it's it's not going to work. Uh, let me explain that real quick up here when we get to root. So the, f the thing that it's looking for on drawer is the width. Um, that's what's being transitioned is how wide the div is. So that's why we're setting width right here and then like it's going to take 0.4 seconds and the transition style we're using is ease in however with the nav bar and the content we're we're adjusting the margin left so that's why the we're assigning margin left right here and if you recall like these values are slightly different like the margin left we're doing the drawer width which is which is this right here minus five rem but this we're setting the width from five rem to go up to whatever this is so they're different values that's why we want to use different transitions on them because they need to travel the same distance uh or different distances in the same amount of time so you can see that right here 
Um, let's also just set that same transition on content while we're at it. Cool, let's uh, start working on the nav. Um, everything in the, the drawer should be fine now. Okay, we're going to set the background color. Let's do var of nav bg1. So just a slightly darker gray. Uh, we're also going to set some padding of 1.5 rem and 3 rem. It's just going to set some padding from the top and from the left. It also sets some padding on the bottom and to the right as well. We just can't notice that quite as well yet. And let's set a border bottom. Let's do two pixels solid. And this is going to be RGB. Let's do 219, 219, 219. That's just this very slight border. Cool. Let's grab the top nav div. So this is also going to be display grid. Let's do grid template columns. We're going to do 1FR max content. And let's set some margin bottom. Let's do 2.5 rem. Cool. We could see that starting to come together quite well. Let's do the search, which is uh, the div that has the search icon as well as the search bar. So display flex, align items, center, and margin right. Auto. And let's set the width to 100%. Uh, one slight issue that we do have here is the uh, fill. We changed to white so we could hardly see that. So let's find magnify. So right here, let's change this to Let's change it to gray and see what it looks like. I think black's fine. Let's just change it to black. If you want to change it to gray, that's fine as well, obviously. Okay, let's grab the input and let's change the styling on this input. So if we grab the search and let's go input, we're going to do display inline block. Let's set the border to zero. That should remove the border from it, which it does, perfect. Let's set the background color to var. This is going to be nav color one. Um, let's set the padding so it's a little bit bigger to 0 0.75 REM and two REM. A little bit too much. Let's do 1.5 and 0.5. That looks better. Uh, let's also do outline color. This is going to be bar blue one. So right now there's nothing, but once you click on it, like this outline color, it's a little bit darker. Uh, let's set the margin left to 1.25 REM. Set border radius, just do five pixels. And let's do the width. Let's do a min this time, 80% um, or 700 pixels. So quite a bit bigger. Maybe let's just do 600 pixels, about 80%. Okay, the reason why it's taking up so much is we haven't defined the width of this stuff over here, and uh, we also messed up the, the bell icon. So I'm just realizing that now the um, all these other icons, I think they're right here. Can't see them because we changed the fill color of all of them to white. So uh, I apologize for that. We're just going to have to go back through these and... 
and change this. So let's just make all these black, I think. Um, I don't even have them on this page. Must have done something similar. But I think, I think black icons will look fine here as well. So let's grab those. I plus out outline is one of them. Um, source branch is one of them. And what's the last one? Star plus outline. Cool. Got those back. That was a mistake, but yeah, the, we're bound to make those. So it's a good thing we fixed them. Okay, let's keep on moving. So next thing we're going to grab is the nav bar and the count which is this over here. So we're gonna do display flex as well. Let's do justify content flex end. So they're all on the same line and they're justified to the right. Line item center. So they're centered vertically. Let's do font size 1.2 rem. So how rem works is we have our root uh, a root font size. So one rem is in this case 16 pixels, 1.2 is 1.2 times 16. So I believe, I believe that's what it is. Let's set the font weight to 800. Cool. Uh, let's start. Um, okay, next thing, let's grab the GitHub avatar. So GH avatar. Let's set the background to a var. And this one's GH avatar. And then we gotta set a few properties on it. So center, center, and then do a backslash and then cover, no repeat. And border radius of 50%. So the reason why it's not showing up, let's just set the account. We're gonna grab GitHub avatar. Let's set a margin of zero, one REM, zero and 2.5 REM. And let's set a height of 40 pixels and a width of 40 pixels. Cool, now it should show up right there. Perfect. We might want to set a little bit of padding around this. Um, on the search so let's just do padding right let's just do 20 pixels our margin right actually so we'll just do a little bit of padding between this let's also grab all images let's set cursor to pointer so any icon on this page we'll have a cursor pointer cool now we should be able to start focusing on the bottom so that one has a class of bottom i think so we'll do display flex um let's do justify content space between and let's do align items center perfect so we could see the buttons get put over here all the way to the right, and this section gets put over here all the way to the left. That's what space between does. Then align item center, just so they're centered uh, horizontally on the page. Okay, we're gonna set profile, uh, display flex, line items center, and let's set a gap of one rem. Okay, we need to grab the um, 
we need to set our avatar there as well. So let's do profile, GitHub avatar, let's set a width. So this one's gonna be bigger. So let's do 75 pixels and a height of 75 pixels. There you go. Cool. Let's do profile. Actually, let's just do greeting. Font weight of 800 and let's do margin bottom of 0.4 rem. Let's do the profile name, font size 1.6 rem. And let's do font weight of of 800. So quite a bit bolder. Okay, last thing I think we need to do is just grab these buttons. So that's in a class called buttons. So display flex, justify content, let's do flex end. Uh, align items, center, and let's set a gap of two rem. So that should space them out pretty well. Each button has a class of button. So let's do background color. It's gonna be var of drawer color. Let's set the font color to var of text secondary, that's white. Set the font weight to 800. Let's give it a little bit of padding of 0.5 rem and 1.8 rem. Makes them quite a bit bigger. And then let's do border radius. Let's do five pixels. Actually, let's do seven pixels. Let's do font size of 20 pixels. And let's do border, one pixel, solid, gray. Cool. And let's set a cursor to pointer as well. Cool, I think that looks better. That even looks better than these ones. Cool. Um, let's, I think that's all we need for the navbar. So let's start working on content. I'm actually just gonna move this content section all the way down here. Okay, we have a lot to do with content, so. Let's set the background color to var content gray. So it just has a slightly gray background. Let's do grid, display grid. It's not gonna change anything yet. Let's set a little bit of padding first of two rem. Okay, so grid template columns is going to be one FR and then auto. And we could already see it starting to come together. Let's do grid template rows. We're gonna do min content and one FR. And let's do gap of two rem. And let's do grid template areas. Okay, if we, oops. We look at this, so uh, uh, we essentially have like one row, or sorry, two columns, and then uh, multiple rows really, but the biggest thing is just those two columns. So this first one, we have our projects, and the second one, we have announcements, and projects, and trending. Okay, we haven't assigned um, we haven't assigned these two uh, areas yet. Let's just do one more thing. Let's set the overflow to auto. 
Let's set the height to 100%. Cool. Okay, we're gonna grab content and we have that H3, which is your projects. Let's set the font size to a bit bigger. Let's do 1.3 rem and let's set the font weight. So it's a little bit more bold to let's do 600. And let's set some margin bottom to 0.8 rem. Perfect. Okay. Uh, the next thing we want to do is let's grab all the projects, um, which is just like one of the main divs and content. So projects. The biggest thing about this is just grid area. Uh, we called it projects. And then let's grab the cards and projects. So let's do display grid, grid template columns, repeat, auto fit, then min max. 300 pixels, one FR. Let's set the grid auto row or grid rows, grid auto rows to 250 pixels. And let's set the gap to two rim and padding bottom of two rim. Okay, the reason why this looks really wonky right now is because uh, we haven't set the width of these cards yet. So we'll be doing that in just a second. Let's go projects uh, dot card. Set the background color to var nav color two, which is uh, the same color that I'm using right here. Uh, let's do border left of 10 pixels, solid, and then var. We actually haven't set this yet. Um, I didn't even do it here, but if you look here, we have like this orange. So let's do that right now. I guess I didn't do that in mine, but that's okay. Let's make this not quite as strong. Okay, that should be fine right there. Let's do display flex and flex direction column. Okay, let's go projects. Then let's do card title. Font size, it's gonna be 1.2 rem. And margin bottom, let's do 0.2 rim. So the, the title just got a little bit bigger. We could probably go 1.5 actually. And let's set a little bit more font weight to 500. Okay, let's do projects and card text. Go display. So this one's going to be a little bit weird. We're going to do WebKit box. And let's do WebKit line clamp five. Then WebKit box orient vertical and overflow hidden. This will just make it so yeah, once we start scrolling, like the, the text is just going to uh, be pretty responsive to like the uh, card changing sizes. Okay, the last thing is we have projects and icons. Let's go margin top auto. 
since we're in display flex like that's just going to shove them all the way down to the bottom um, let's do line items flex end sorry line self flex end let's go to display flex um justify content flex end uh, let's also space these out a little bit so let's set a gap of 1.8 rem uh, let's do a little bit less 1.4 rem and let's go line items center Let's set some padding bottom to five pixels and padding right uh, five pixels. Cool. And if we make this like full screen, we could still see like these are taking up all of the space that we have available. So. Let's do a little bit more work with the cards. So let's, this is going to affect all cards. We have cards like in the announcement section as well. So let's set the background color oops, to RGBA. Let's do 45, 187, 187, and then 0.459. Set the padding to uh, 2 rem, border radius of, uh, let's do 0.6 rem, and we're going to set a box shadow. 0, 10 pixels, 15 pixels, negative 3 pixels, RGB, 0, 0, 0. Divided by 0.1. I googled this. Okay, I'm like, there's no way I could ever remember this. And if you have a tool like Google, like, you shouldn't really worry about memorizing stuff like this. Anytime I do a box shadow with native CSS, I have to Google it, and that's totally fine. Like, I don't even really know what this means. Just know that it works. So we, we don't even notice the box shadow that much, but there's a little bit of box shadow. And what it does is like these negative values make it so, yeah, it looks like there's more of a shadow here than on the right and on the top. Cool. Um, these are still taking up way too much space. And that's because we haven't actually assigned um, announcements and trending to these sections over here I think let's start moving on to the announcements so I'm going to grab those announce mints I think I spelled that right it's going to be grid area announcements make sure I spelled everything right don't think I spelled this right Okay, let's make sure we spelled it right in our CS or error. Cool. Let's go announcement, just single, not plural. It's going to be width. Let's do 25CH. And let's do padding, one rem, zero. Okay, that should be showing up. For some reason, it's still down here. I think it's because we actually need... Um, let's move the card above uh, 
um, move the card above projects. Let's move it right here. And we're, we're just going to do a greater than sign on all of these. Okay, what I think is going on is we're actually, we need to move, uh, we need to make sure that, like, uh, yep. okay, so what the problem is, is we put everything inside of projects, so we know that projects div is right here. Let's move, make sure that our trending, our announcements are not in projects. There we go. So that was a pretty rookie mistake. Um, it looks like the these cards are still not working how we want them to, but we're getting closer. Go back to our styles, and um, we're probably going to have to undo some of the stuff we were just doing. Uh, let's like get rid of these. we put in earlier because it seemed to be helping but it actually wasn't okay still taking up too much space I think we need a comma right here there we go so yep the issue was is in this min max I didn't have a comma and yeah I didn't know exactly what to do so now we can see our screen gets big enough, which is right, like right about there, and it pops in. So I think we'll just keep it how it is right there. But I think this looks pretty good. So let's refresh. I don't know what's going on right here. Huh. That's weird. Let's figure out why that's happening. And turn, take this off. Okay. We're just gonna have to deal with scroll bar right here, but honestly, it's fine. Okay, debugging as always. It's a good thing. Okay, we're working on these announcements. Right now, it's just the huge card looks ugly so let's go all the way down to the bottom this needs colon perfect okay let's get the first child of announcement so set the padding top to zero and we're going to copy this we're going to say last child padding bottom of zero and let's grab the h5s in announcement the h5 it's going to be a font size of 0.9 rem it's just a little bit smaller and margin bottom let's do 0.1 rem Actually, let's bump it up. Let's go 0.3. Okay. Let's get the paragraph in announcement. Announcement P. Let's do font size of 0.8 rem. Let's do display. We're gonna actually just copy this from uh, right here. Copy all of this from card text. Let's change this to three. That should be good. So it's gonna be hidden um, just because of how much there is, how much lore and mipsum there is, but I think we'll just go with that. Um, let's grab one more thing for announcement. So announcement, let's do plus announcement. And that'll be border top. A var 
for right now, let's just do gray. Uh, one pixel solid. We're gonna tone this gray down just a little bit. Maybe not that much. So we increased it a little bit. Cool, I think that looks good right there. As you'll notice, like these don't get affected by the dashboard expanding. They have a, they're more fixed, right? But let's also actually, let's just make this nav bar sticky. Didn't even notice that was happening. So let's go up to nav bar. Okay, we'll do position sticky, top zero. Now let's just do our last section, which is just trending right here. We've already set the grid area. Okay, so let's do trending and then card. Let's do padding of 1.5 rem. Let's do dot trend going to be display flex um, align items center and then let's do a gap of one rem and cursor pointer so everything on that will have a cursor let's do trend plus trend to margin top of 1.5 rem. So that'll only be if like two of them are next to each other. The second one will have a margin top of 1.5. Okay, let's do trend, then account, speed display, Oops. flex. Flex direction column. Um, line items. Uh, let's do flex start. Justify content center. And let's do font size of 0.9 rem. So slightly smaller than it is normally. Do trend username, font weight of 500 and margin bottom. Let's do 0.15 rem. Okay, we're closing in on the end. Let's just do um, all of the icons. Technically here, we just can't see them. Actually, they're not even here. So trend one is going to be GH avatar two. So it's going to be background of var GH avatar two. And we're going to do the same thing. Center, center, slash, cover, no repeat. Border radius. 50%. Let's do width of 40 pixels and a height of 40 pixels. Cool, there's the first one, James, I think. So we're gonna copy this uh, three more times. Okay. Trend 2 is actually just going to be our GitHub avatar. Okay, Trend 3, GitHub avatar of 3, and Trend 4, GitHub avatar 4. Is there another one? I think that was it. So I think Amy got left out, but that's that should be it. Let's do full screen. Uh, this navbar is a little bit too tall. Let's 
figure out why that is. Two height. Okay, the height I have 100 viewport width. That's a problem. Let's change that to H. And yeah, that fixes our problem. And if we make this a little bit smaller, we can scroll down. Eventually the nav bar drops off, but that's okay. As we get bigger, those cards drop off. So yeah, hopefully, hopefully you guys were able to follow along and you enjoyed this project. Um, yeah, there's a lot of CSS and hopefully, hopefully I didn't bore you guys with all of that. There's a lot of cool CSS tricks and stuff that we can do. Um, yeah, hopefully you guys were able to follow along. Let me know down below in the comments if you have any questions. Really excited. We're to be done with this um to be done with this section uh the next the next part that we have is javascript which is going to be a lot of fun we have some really cool projects to work on like tic-tac-toe to-do list which is a classic javascript app so it's going to be a lot of fun here so uh yeah i will catch you guys later